This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and happy Sunday. God bless you. I'm Pastor A.D., Pastor of True Vine NBC here in Houston, Texas, and I thank you so much for joining us for our Sunday morning service to hear a word from the Lord. And today I'm going to be talking about the principles to living a blessed life the principles to living a blessed life. And I love that song by Fred Hammond that says, we're blessed in the city, we're blessed in the fields, we're blessed when we come and when we go, because we are blessed. And when I'm talking about blessed, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about being happy. I'm talking about having a joy, which is the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so I'm talking about having joy, having that peace, having happiness in your life like never before. The happiness that the world can't give you and the world can't take you take away. And so that's what I'm talking about when, I, when I'm talking about being blessed. And so today we're going to be talking about that. And the message is going to be coming from Psalm 1. Psalm 1, verse 1 through 6. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6. So please open your Bibles and turn there. I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to jump right into the message. Lord, I thank you so much, dear God, for waking us up this morning, for Lord, for, for uh, starting us on our way. And Lord, we thank you, dear God, for allowing us, dear God, uh, giving us opportunity to declare your word to God, to share your word. Lord, I thank you, Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for YouTube, dear God. I thank you for all the social media pages that we get to utilize, dear God, to get your message out. We thank you so much, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We thank you for your darling son who died on the cross and rose on the third day, God. We love you so much. And thank you, Holy Ghost, for dwelling with us day in and day out. Thank you for guiding us and leading us and, and directing us. We love you so much. And Lord, we bless your holy name forever, dear God. He who has let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. So Psalm, Psalm 1, verses 1 through 6. That's, that's where we're going to come from. And so, again, the topic is the principles to living a blessed life. The principles to living a blessed life. And so the wisdom psalm basically functions as an introduction to the entire book of Psalms. It's theme is as big as the whole Bible because it tells of people's paths and ultimate destination. By two cycles of contrast, Psalm 1 separates all people into their respective spiritual categories. As believers in Christ, we are blessed when we come and we bless when we go. You don't know what it is to live a blessed life until you have lived a blessed life. You really don't know what a blessed life is until you have experienced it, okay? So, I want to talk to you about that today. Ultimately, according to uh, Psalm 1, God desire for believers, for his children to live a blessed life. Blessed means to be happy and exceedingly joyful. And it's not the kind of happiness that the world offers, okay? What the world offers is different. That's the kind that comes and goes, which is based on conditions, your conditions, your, your livelihood, how you're living at that, that time or that period, you woke up with attitude or not. It's conditional. Your conditions, a lot of times, determines your attitude. Some of us like the ways of the world. Some of us have conformed ourselves to the world because uh, we love what the world brings. But... They truly don't know what it's like to live a blessed life, a happy life, a joyful life, regardless of your situation, of your conditions. However, the scripture tells us God wants to give us a blessed life. If you're a child of God, he wants to give you a blessed life. You should have a blessed life, a happy life, blessed from a perspective of the ind individual. This is a deep-seated joy and contentment in God from the perspective of the believing community. It refers to redemptive favor. How many of you love favor from God? You have favor. If you're a child of God, you have favor. The beatitude man and woman is first described as one who avoids such associations as which exemplify sins sequently downward drag. And so I'm going to start, I'm going to, we're going to start with that first verse and we're going to um, really dig into the scriptures and I'm going to give you principles into how to live a blessed life. So the, verse one of Psalm one says, blessed, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Okay, let's stop right there. So number one, you must examine your walk. 
Examine your walk. Watch where you walk. How are you walking? How do you live your life? These are questions you should ask yourself. How do you live your life? How, how are you walking? The man or woman will be blessed if he or she watches where they walk and, and walks not in the counsel of what? The ungodly. The problem is some of you are taking counsel from someone who doesn't have a clue what they're talking about. It's problematic when you are getting advice from someone about marriage when they don't have when they when they have been divorced three or four times. It's a problem when you're getting uh, taking marriage advice from someone who never experienced marriage before. It's problematic when you are getting advice from someone about finances when they have filed bankruptcy three or four times. It's, it, it, or either they're broke. It's problematic. That's a problem. That is a problem. You would never go any farther than you are now receiving information, uh, false information from someone who never experienced what you need help in or they experienced it but failed in that area. That would, you will never go any further. If you're if you are going to get counsel, make sure you get advice from someone who know how to manage their money and or have a successful marriage. We are making mistakes by listening to people who don't have a clue of what they're talking about. So how are you how are you walking? So how's your walk? Um, who are you talking to? Who are you around? Who are you getting advice from? Stop listening to everybody and everyone and get into the word of God. The word of God will teach you and the Holy Ghost will teach you. So keep walking by listening to the word of God. The word of God will teach you. It will help you. It will guide you. That's what we have the Holy Ghost here for. Jesus said, I left you a comforter and this comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, will, gu will guide you and lead you and direct you to where you need to go in life. All you got to do is seek the, seek the Lord, seek him, seek God, pray to God, uh, worship God, praise God, come to God, read the word of God, pray. I'm telling you, these things fast, these things will bring you closer to God and God will direct you in the direction you need to go. And so the next one I want to talk about, the next principle, be careful, be careful where you stand. Be careful where you stand. Some of you are standing with the wrong people, okay? Some of you are standing with the wrong people. You are connected to the wrong people. You're connected with the ungodly. And that is a bad situation when you're connected with the ungodly. And you don't have enough courage to disconnect your friendship, your ties with the ungodly, because you're afraid, about, you're afraid of losing friends. And that's the problem. We love pleasing people. Stop pleasing people. Stop pleasing people. You please God. Unless you're married, then you please your wife or your husband, of course. But however, when I'm talking, I'm just talking about pleasing people. Stop pleasing, trying to please everybody, make everybody happy. You can't make everybody happy. Your job is to please Jesus Christ. And you don't have enough courage to disconnect your friendship, your ties with the ungodly. Nothing good would ever come out of that relationship when hanging with the ungodly and following in the path of the ungodly. Nothing good would come out of it. You can't get a word from the Lord inside of a club hanging out with sinners. That ain't going to happen. You can't uh, get a word from the Lord uh, at a party. That won't happen. You, you won't have joy. You won't have happiness. You won't have peace. But you won't and you won't get it at a party. You won't get it at a party. That ain't going to happen. Hanging with sinners, uh, 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 ungodly people. That's not going to happen because we're sinners now saved by grace. And if you're a sinner saved by grace, you should be hanging around people that sinners saved by grace, not still hanging around sinners that's lost in this world. No, no, that's not how it works. You would never grow that way. You would never, uh, you would never exceed what you want to exceed in life. That would never happen. You would never be successful in that way because you are hanging around on the ungodly. You want all these things, but you want to get, but, but uh, you won't get it because you're connected to the wrong people who don't know God, who don't want to know God, who don't like God, who talk bad about God. You are connected with people who don't have nothing to do with God. What does light and darkness have in common? Nothing. That's the question. Nothing. They have nothing in common. And that's the answer. Nothing. What does the God and ungodly have in common? Nothing. Stop trying to fit in with worldly people so you can have friends. That's not how it works. If you don't stop hanging around with them, you will become just like them. So hang with God. Hang with God. Hang with God. And then our uh, third point is watch where you sit. Watch where you sit. Where are you sitting? 
Sit here means being attached or connected to. So who are you connected to? So watch who you are connected to, attached to. Who are you attached to? You are engaging with people who don't like Jesus. You are engaging with people, let me say it again, who don't like Jesus, who don't talk about Jesus, who don't want to hear about Jesus. You know people like that don't want to hear nothing about Jesus. They don't want to hear nothing about the word of God, but they talk bad about Jesus. Don't connect yourself with scornful people. Be careful of your surroundings. Just because a person attends church once a week doesn't make them a Christian. Let me say that again. <clears throat> Just because a person attends church once a week doesn't make them a Christian. They have other motives, okay? The enemy can use your so-called friends to try to weaken your faith. People will fool you just to hinder you, to distract you, to disengage you from your belief and practices. They would do these things. They would do these things. They will turn you out. They will turn you away from God. And they will. Excuse me. <clears throat> and they will. They would do these things. They don't, uh, they don't, <laughs> I'm telling you, they will take you to hell with them. Put it like that. They don't want to go alone. They want company. So watch who you are connected to and be ready to disconnect. Be ready to disconnect. You have to make the decision. Do you want to continue to hang out with worldly people? That don't mean you any good. That, that don't, uh, that's not in your faith. They don't care about your faith. You need to start hanging around the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Do you want to continue to associate with people who drag you down? Or do you want to hang out with the one who could open up doors for you that no man can close and make a way out of no way? The problem is the person or people that you're hanging with, you are becoming just like them. You're becoming just like them because you want to be accepted by them. Isn't there something how we want to be accepted by people? How we want people to notice us? How we want people to love us? But we're, hey, we're around the wrong people. There are people that you can be around that can love you the same way, that, can, that care about you, and they also believe in Jesus Christ. They love Jesus Christ. However, you got to disconnect yourself from that. So what I'm trying to get to you to understand, you must want Jesus more than you want them. Okay, you must want Jesus more than you want them. Get more acquainted with Jesus than your worldly friends. Separate yourself before it's too late. And that's the thing. When you come into Christ, we are justified. We are sanctified. Sanctified means to separate yourself. You are separated now from the world. You are different. You stand out. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so we got to get more acquainted with Jesus than your worldly friends. Get more acquainted with Jesus than worldly friends. Separate yourself before it's too late. If you want to be blessed, seek the Lord. The verse says, seek the Lord while he may be found. The man and the woman of God will be blessed if they walk not, stand not, nor sit with the ungodly. They will be blessed. I'm telling you, you will be blessed if you do those things. And then we're going to lead us to verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Let's stop right there. So the next one is delight in the law of the Lord. Delight in the law of the Lord. Here's the person who is blessed. Here's the person who is happy. Here's the person who has joy because he or she delights themselves in the law of the Lord. They learn how to find delight in the law of the Lord. They love to worship. They love to pray. They love to fast. They love to, to praise God. They love to read the word of God. They love to meditate on his word both day and night. He is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Okay, He is a reward of those who diligently seek him. And that's the thing. And I'm going to give you a, a point a, he or she meditates, he or she meditates, he or she meditates. The spiritually happy man is characterized by the con consistent uh, contemplation and inter inter internalization of God's word, of God's word for ethical direction and obedience. There's a difference between reading and meditating. Okay. There's a big difference between reading the Bible, just reading the scripture and the law of the Lord, in the law he meditates day and night, okay? That's, that's the difference between reading and then saying, 
and in his law, he meditates day and night. And you keep that in your mind. Meditating is in the, and you keep that in your mind all day. This run through. And in his law, he meditates day and night. In his law, he meditates day and night. And in his law, and it keeps going. It's, it keeps continuing uh, to go in your mind. To uh, and you meditating on that. You're chewing on it. You're chewing. It's like chewing gum. You're chewing on it. You're chewing on that on that word until it just sticks with you. And you begin, and some of you think you have accomplished something. And the problem is, some of you think you have accomplished something just because you woke up that morning to read a scripture. That's, that's not it. That's not how it works. That's not how it works. When you meditate on the word of God, uh, it means to let the word of God run through your mind all day long. Uh, it becomes repetitious. It, it, it stays in your mind and, and, and all day long. You talk to yourself about it all day long and, and you continue to talk to yourself about it. To meditate on the same verse so much until you start to get something different or more powerful out of it every time you look at it. And it's because you're thinking about it all the time, day and night. When you know that the scripture has life, you will meditate on it. You will chew on it. You will keep it in your mind. You will hold on, hold on to it in your mind. You will go over it continually in your mind. You will study in your mind uh, until you want some more, until you're ready to move forward to another verse. I mean, you will have it. It, it just continues to repeat in your mind. And so that is called meditating. You are consistent in obedience when you delight yourself in the law of the Lord, even at night. I and mean, what I'm talking about, what the Bible talks about when it says night, you are meditating on the Lord night, day and night. What do I mean by night? When trouble comes your way, when, when you have been ostracized, when you have been facing sickness, when you are facing divorce, when you are facing adversity, trials, tribulations, temptation, struggle, struggling to stay alive, broke, you are still meditating on God's holy word regardless of the situation. See, the earthly, hap the worldly happiness, the, the one that, that the earth gives, that the people gives here on earth, that goes away. It comes and goes because it determines, it really determines your situation. I mean, however your situation is, it's going to determine your happiness. Your, are you happy? Are you sad? However, when God blesses you, it, it's eternal joy. It's eternal. You have this joy of the Lord is your strength. I mean, you are always joyful. You are always happy. Um, nothing can quench it because you're happy at all times because you're blessed. That is, uh, is what distinguish, distinguishes a blessed man or woman from the ungodly. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter the circumstances. That man and woman that is blessed, they have found favor in God's eyesight. And they will meditate on God's holy word both day and night. When the sun is shining and everything is okay. And at night when hell, when all hell break, broke, breaks loose, they will worship God. Favor is not fair, but I have it. Somebody say, I have favor from God. I have favor from God. I'm not just talking about material blessings. God will bless you with things that money can't buy. Let me say that again. I'm not talking just talking about material blessings. God will bless you with things that money can't buy. God will open your eyes to things you've never seen. God will do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. He will do it. Somebody say, I got favor. Somebody how about I got favor? I got favor. I got favor. And so that brings us to verse three. Verse three. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper. My God. So be like a tree. That's the third one. Be like a tree. That's the next one. I mean, be like a tree, be like a tree, not a bush, not a limb or a branch, but be like a tree. When you are not planted, you are unstable. You understand that? When you are not planted by God, you are unstable. You are, you are an unstable creature. You are unstable. You don't know where you are. You don't know what you're doing. On one way, one day you're happy. One minute you're happy. Next minute you're mad. One minute you're back happy. Next minute you're mad. Uh, you're just so unstable. Um, your conversation is so unstable. Trees do not plant themselves. Neither do, they, neither do sinful people transport themselves into God's kingdom. Salvation is his marvelous work of grace, yet there is genuine responsibility in appropriating the abundant resources of God, which lead to eventual productivity. OK, so you will be blessed. You will be blessed when you're a tree planted by the rivers of water. And I'm going to explain. I'm going to get deeper into that. A put a under this one. This is point a planet. You are planted, planet, put planet, planted, planted. You are planted in 
The thing about God, when he plants you, he will plant you in a place where you can be blessed, where you can grow, where you will have production, productivity. He will plant you in a place where you can grow, where you can excel, and he will plant you right by the water where your roots will receive nourishment while everybody else tree is dry. You always have water by your tree. God promised us he would do it. He would do it. He said, if you meditate on my, if you do, if you do all these things, who walks not in the counsel of God, you know, stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And he meditates on it day and night. So if you do these things, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You will have favor from God. God will rain favor upon you. He'll open up a window, pour you out a blessing. You won't have room enough to receive. God will do it. He'll make you the head and not the tail, the lender and not the borrower. God will do it. God will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. God will do it. God will open up the floodgates of heaven and just let it rain on you. God will do it. He promised he'll do it. You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. And that tree cannot be moved. That tree is stern. That tree will not be moved. It will stand regardless of the fact, regardless of the situation, regardless of the wind blows, regardless of the thunderstorms, regardless of, hur regardless of hurricanes and tornadoes. It will stand. Somebody say, I'm standing. I'm standing. I'm standing on God. I'm standing on God. I'm standing on his promise. I'm standing on God. And then we have B. B. Let's move to B. Production. We talk about production. Let's talk about production. Because you are blessed, you will have fruit in your season. Because you are blessed, you will have fruit in your season. That's what it says. That brings forth its fruit in its season. So you have production. Because you are blessed, you will have fruit in your season. There is a season for sowing and there is a season for harvest. I want you all to get that. There is a season for sowing and there is a season for harvest. There's a season to sow and there's a season to reap. There's a season to plant and there's a season to gather. And the problem is there's people who is coming together during the sowing season. Let me say that again. The problem is there's people who is coming together du during the sowing season. You come and doing the wrong season together. You come into the field in the wrong season. Again, we live in a generation who plants on Monday and expects a harvest to, to, to come by Friday. It doesn't work like that. That's not how it works. The Bible says you cast your bread upon the water and, and after many days, it will return to you. Let me say it again. You cast your bread upon the water and after many days, it will return to you. If you plant it and water it in due season, God will give it increase. Paul said, I do the planting, Apollo does the water, but God gives the increase. So you got to wait till the increase come. God is going to give the increase, but you got to do the planting and you got to do the watering and then watch God give the increase. The Bible says, let us not grow weary while in well doing for in due season, you will reap if you faint not. Stop expecting a harvest without planting. Stop expecting a harvest to come without planting. Stop wanting the blessing, but you don't want to work. A man don't want to work. The, uh, the Bible says a man that don't work, don't eat. He won't eat. It won't happen. It won't happen. You must work the works of him who sent you while it is day for when it's night cometh. No man can work. No man can work. So work, work. You must do something. You must take action and work and work for God and do for God and watch when you sow your seeds. I'm telling you, your harvest will come in due season, but don't quit. Don't faint. Don't give up. And then it says, who leaves shall also not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So I want to talk about prosperity. The word prosperity here means to be pushed forward. We serve a God who has the ability to push you forward, to move you forward, to advance you to another level. You are in a position right now because God has pushed you forward. He has poured blessings upon your life to move you forward. He has to put you in a position that you didn't deserve to be in. And, and I'm right. God has put us in a position that we didn't really deserve to be in. For others, God is about to push you forward. He's about to open up doors and take you to places you've never seen because you are blessed because you're walking 
uh, not with the ungodly, but you meditating on his word both day and night. And he is about to do something great in your life. And he is about to blow your mind. He is about to take you to another level. He is about to grant you that promotion. There's favor on your life. Whatever you touch, it'll be blessed. Whatever you do is blessed. Whatever you say is blessed. Whatever you do, it shall prosper. Because it's something about the word of God that I meditate on day in and day out. It blesses me. It is moving me forward. So how many are ready to walk in God's favor? When God have favor on your life, nobody can push you back. Nobody can hold you back. Nobody can stop you. Nobody can block you. Nobody can get in your way because what God has for you is for you. And you're living in a blessed life and you should, you should like living this kind of life because you are living a blessed life. Somebody holler out, God's favor is upon my life. God's favor is upon my life. I don't know about you, but God's favor is upon my life. Oh my God. His favor is upon my life. His favor is upon your life because you are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. So you are, you always, um, you always receiving, um, those, uh, uh nutrients and he's, and because you're planted by the water, the, the, the life source, you're right there by it and you plant it by the water and it's feeding your tree and you are prospering, you're producing and you are a godly person. You're blessed because you're walking in God's favor. And now there's a change up here. We get, we get to uh, four, five, and six. There's a change up. There's a, there's, a, there, there's a change in the conversation. Now God is talking about the ungodly. The fourth verse says, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So the last point is punishment. We're talking about punishment, punishment. He separates the tares from the wheat. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah, Jesus gave a parable. He separated the tares from the wheat because the tares was affecting the wheat the growing of the wheat. So God drives people that are not going for you, that, uh, that are not good for you, I'm sorry, uh, away from you. So God drives people that are not good for you away from you. He removes them. He, he takes them away. He strips them out of your life. He puts them out of your life. No matter how long you've been knowing each other, I don't care if it's 25, 30, 40 years, God removes them out of your life because they're not good for you. Where he's taking you, he's taking you to a place where they cannot go. Where they can't even visit because God is doing a great thing in your life and the ungodly cannot hang with the godly. I want you to understand that light cannot hang with darkness. There's two separate things. There's two separate uh, um, things. There's a distinction. And so they cannot hang with each other. And now you're crying and complaining because the people are no longer your friends. And so now you're, you, you, you're, you're crying and you're complaining because they're no longer your friends. God has stripped them out of your life after 20 years, 30 years. He stripped them out of your life. Stop crying and complaining. God has separated them. He has removed them from your life. And it's a good thing. You should be rejoicing that God removed those sorry, no good person, that sorry, no good guy out of your life. You, you should be rejoicing that God removed that hell-raising woman, that never satisfied, gold-digging woman out of your life. You should be rejoicing no longer is she or he your headache no longer your problem they're no longer your baggage they're no longer your agony they're no longer your pain they're no longer uh your baggage you don't got to carry them around anymore you don't have to hold on to them anymore god is doing a new thing stop trying to hold on to people that god is trying to remove out of your life yeah god put them out of your life and you go pick them right back up try to bring them back in your life stop that god will put new people around you new folks around you a new circle around you a new environment around you god will do it. Stop trying to call them. Don't text them. Don't tweet them. Stay out of their DM. Stay out of their Facebook. And stop Stop going to Twitter. Just leave them alone. I'm telling you, God will do it. Somebody holler out that relationship is over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Now, so let it be over. Let it be over. Now you have a great relationship with God. God wants a relationship, a divine relationship between you and him. And he wants you to seek him daily. He wants you to meditate on his word both day and night. He wants 
you to call on him. He wants you to walk with the godly. He wants you to talk with the godly. He wants you to sit with the godly. He wants you to stand with the godly people. He wants you to gather with the church. I'm telling you, we should be gathering. The church should be gathering at all times. Even though we can't have church right now because of the coronavirus, we still should be gathering online, talking about the word of God like we're doing now. Gather together in the spirit, man, and talk about Jesus Christ and what he has done. God have greater things for you, but your old friends can't go with you. Everybody can't go with you where God is going to take you. God have special grapes for you that they can't have. God have special fruit for you that they can't have. They can't, uh, they can't taste it. They can't hold it. They can't do nothing. They can't experience it. Only you can experience it until you let go of your friends uh, that's ungodly. God will not move you from that position. He will not move you from that place. I'm telling you, but once you let him go, once you say that's it, it's over. I'm telling you, God will move you, excel you to higher heights. God will do it. I'm telling you, he will do it. Let them go. Somebody holler out, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. It's over. It's over. Let them go. Let that go. Let that thing alone. Let it go. I'm telling you, once you leave that park car alone, I'm telling you, and your car is running, it, it, it Hey, everything will be better, but you got to learn to let it go. You got to let them go. Let them go and let God be God. Let God work a great work in your life. He who has begun a good thing will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. And I pray today that you receive that word. I pray today that you learn the principles of being blessed because it, that's what it's about. It's about serving Christ. That's who it's about. It's not about us. It's not about me. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about him, our Lord and Savior, who died and rose on the third day for our sins. I thank you so much for joining us. I pray that, that I'm telling you, I pray that you prosper. I pray that you um, excel. I pray that you be blessed with happiness. I pray that you produce fruit. I pray that uh, you will walk with the godly and not the ungodly. I thank you so much. Once again, continue to support this channel. Continue to leave comments. Continue um, to hear the word of God. Learn the word of God. And I'll see you again Wednesday on Wednesday for Bible study. God bless you. Our motto here at True Vine is with all lowliness and all gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. True Vine, we are the church of love. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to this channel and join our online Christian family. Tithes, offerings, and donations can be made via Cash App at dollar sign TVMBC or by mail at True Vine Missionary Baptist Church, 1407 Grove Street, Houston, Texas, 77020. Thank you so much and have a blessed day.